Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm bringing you week two of my Hellfire Gala reviews. So this is of course the X-Men event that's been going on for these past couple weeks. And uh, we got the first week review last week. Go ahead and check that video out if you'd like so you can get all caught up on everything. But like I was saying in that first review, uh, the timeline of the Hellfire Gala is very strange. Uh, we saw basically the whole night of this Hellfire Gala happen in Marauders number 21, which is one of the three issues that we got last week. So this week we've got two issues and then sort of an extra that I'm just going to mention at the end who's, that sort of ties into the Hellfire Gala. So we're going to start off uh, in the chronological order that these are actually supposed to come out. The first one here is Excalibur issue number 21. I'm not an ongoing reader of Excalibur. Um, I have read like the Ten of Swords tie-ins and a few of the issues on Marvel Unlimited, and it's kind of a slow series from those issues that I did read, but this one did not disappoint. It was super easy to follow, even though there were some threads from the actual series, uh, the plot of the actual series, which were followed up in this issue. I still completely understood everything, at least for the most part. It's written by Teeny Howard with art by Marcus Toe. They're just a regular creative team on the Excalibur book. And this is another one that's really not necessary to the actual Hellfire Gala. Um, in the back here, I'll probably take a picture of it and show you guys on screen, but um, we have this checklist, and they've highlighted in red which actual Hellfire Gala issue issues are the most important to read. And as I keep on reading these Hellfire Gala issues where it's just basically an issue of the series with the Hellfire Gala involved, but nothing actual important happens. So I'm officially saying it now. I think if you're wanting to get Hellfire Gala, don't waste your time on any of these other tie-ins. They're still good. I've been, I've had a positive review of these uh, issues so far. There's still a few more weeks of this to go, but I'd say just get those highlighted in red issues because those, those are really the only ones that matter. Those announcements that were are supposed to be happening are going to be happening in those issues. And all of the rest of them are just these points of view from different X-Men teams at the Hellfire Gala and what they're doing during this one night. But we're getting into full spoilers ahead. Read them if you don't want to get spoiled. So we're going to pull this off the stand and look into Excalibur issue number 21 so I can refresh my memory on what actually happened in this issue. So of course Excalibur is this team following Betsy Braddock, who's now the Captain Britain, Reichter, Jubilee, Rogue and Gambit, who are now married, and a few other mutants. Apocalypse was a member of the team, but ever since Ten of Swords, he's been off in Araco. He hasn't been a member of the team since then. Uh, so we just see them preparing for the event uh, with all of their strange, crazy outfits. Every mutant has had some like redesign for the Hellfire Gala and a bunch of fashion done. There's been a, a big series of variant covers for all of these issues, like on a, where the mutants on a green carpet showing off their style, their fashion for this one night, uh, but we see the mutants arrive at the Hellfire Gala. Immediately, Reichter is pulled aside by a recently resurrected Shatterstar. Of course, with the mutant resurrection protocols on Krakoa, any mutant can be resurrected after death, and that's meant that a lot of characters who have been dead in comics for a while have been able to be resurrected. Shatterstar is covered in blood for some reason. We don't get an explanation for it, but it's kind of alarming. So Reichter goes off, and uh, then we see Rogue's point of view, and we find out that she was one of the newly elected X-Men members. Um, so this one sort of takes place after X-Men 21. That is one sort of continuity problem. They got the checklist a little bit wrong, because in X-Men 21 we get the reveal of this new X-Men team, who has been voted to be these, the members of the official you know, X-Men team of Krakoa, and Rogue is one of them, but we see uh, Gambit congratulating her. She's saying, oh, I'm surprised you're not jealous that only I'm on the team and you're not. And he was saying, no, I don't got time for the X-Men. I just want to still be on this Excalibur team. It seems like an easier job. Captain Britain is pulled aside by Pete Wisdom, an old friend who I don't know anything about. who's a new character to me after reading this issue. Uh, but he is a fellow mutant and also a member of the British government. And he's pulled her aside to give her the scoop on what has happened since she was gone. Captain Britain was killed in the Ten of Swords event. Basically, Captain Captain Britain is like the official hero of Britain, the protector. Since then they've like rebuked her title and given it to the Coven Akaba as the official protectors of Britain. This like strange group of magic users in red cloaks who has been like a, an underlying threat through all of the Excalibur series. Pete Wisdom tells her that they've actually arrived at the gala tonight. They've been invited by Professor X and Magneto, like a lot of other celebrities and different humans have. This is the one night that anybody non-Krakoan that has been invited 
with their ticket. As long as they have a flower on their chest, they can come in and be on Krakoa for one night only. So uh, then we see that these Kova Nakaba have pulled together a meeting with Professor X and Emma Frost, and they've come to tell them that they're going to stop doing their deal with Krakoa. All of these different countries have made the official deal with Krakoa that they'll be giving them money for the life-saving drugs that have cured so many illnesses. But now Great Britain is officially cutting off their trade deal with Krakoa. We don't have an actual reason for this, but it might have something to do with Captain Britain. Uh, of course, Betsy Braddock was is a new Captain Britain. It used to be a man named Brian Braddock, and uh, for a long time at this point, she has been the new Captain Britain, but Britain hasn't like fully accepted her as the new Captain Britain, so it probably has something to do with that. I'm sure that if you're a regular reader of Excalibur, you'd understand more. And then as we see all of the different Excalibur members interacting with other mutants and different celebrities and whatnot at the Hellfire Gala, we see that Pete Wisdom follows the Kova Nakaba back to their home base, I guess, and then he's suddenly sacrificed by them. They pull him into a shrine, stab him with a knife, they say that they need mutant blood to unleash something. There's some sort of mutant blood sacrifice. We then see that Morgan Le Fay, the dark like witch ruler of Otherworld, has been awoken in the castle that she's been chained up in since early issues of Excalibur, um, so that mutant blood sacrificed by the Coven Akaba has awoken her. That'll probably also be followed up in Excalibur, just like I was saying. We then see Reichter going off because he hates parties uh, to the outskirts of Krakoa, in which he starts to form a new island. He has like earth powers where he can form land and you know break it up, cause earthquakes, stuff like that. Um, so he forms this completely new island along with help with the help of some ancient druids. And on top of this island is the lighthouse, some, which is Excalibur's like headquarters. I think that's been their headquarters since the beginning. Uh, and then at a cliffhanger of the issue, we see Morgan Le Fay step through a cocoon gate somehow. I'm not sure if she's a mutant or not, so that might be a big deal if she isn't. Uh, but she is back on Earth and ready to cause havoc and destruction in the Excalibur title. And then we also see Riker and Shatterstar reunite again, this time Shatterstar a little less crazy, just wanting to talk to, to Riker and reunite their relationship possibly. So that's where the Excalibur issue left off. Like I was saying, doesn't tie into Hellfire Gala that much. The only way that they used the Hellfire Gala in this issue was um, to progress pro plot threads in the actual Excalibur series, which I have not been getting. But all the same, I understood everything in this issue despite not getting the Excalibur series. All right, and then the second official Hellfire Gala issue that we have this week is X-Men number 21. And boy, this was a truly good issue. Not only is this one of the highlighted and read most important issues of the Hellfire Gala, but like I was saying earlier in the video, it's also Jonathan Hickman's final issue on the main X-Men title. We've since gotten some news that uh, his whole thread with his ongoing um, plot line that he has that he started way back in House of Ten and Powers of X is going to be followed up in a four issue miniseries called Inferno, which I think is starting this September, it might be December or August. I'm not completely sure on that. Uh, but for this issue specifically, we had four different artists on this one. It was written by Jonathan Hickman, of course, with art by Nick, Dr Nick Dragoda, Russell Dodderman, Lucas Werneck, and Sarah Pichelli. A couple of those artists are some of my favorites. Russell Dodderman's art was spectacular on this issue with some great colors by Matthew Wilson. But this one was basically just also sort of an overview of the whole gala. We saw different points in time, and each artist did about five pages to complete the 20-page issue where different big events happened at the gala. So we got the official unveiling of this new X-Men team, which of course wasn't that big a deal to us readers because we've known who these X-Men are going to be for so long. A long time ago, a few months back, we voted on one of the members in real life who ended up being a member of this X-Men team, and all of the rest were decided by, you know, the Marvel creators. But we also saw a look into Namor and him arriving on the on Krakoa for the Hellfire Gala, Professor X and Magneto trying to convince him to become one of the Quiet Council members, which is like the official government of Krakoa, basically the people who decide what's going to happen. There's been two slots empty and they wanted Namor to take one of them, but in an interesting conversation he was saying, Namor was saying, I control, you know, 70% of the land. Since he's the king of Atlantis, 
He controls all bodies of water, which is way more than uh, Professor X and Magneto control. He was saying they, all they have is a little island. Why would he take a spot on their little quiet council when he has such a bigger empire? And then he went off saying that if they want him to join Krakoa, they're going to need to offer him just a lot more than that. We also saw Cyclops kind of recapping his whole story in a conversation with Kevin Feige, which was kind of funny. Who Kevin Feige is like the guy behind all of Marvel Studios, the, I don't know what his official title is but the producer I guess and it was just Cyclops talking about his whole experience from when he first got his mutant powers in his teenage years and then Professor X helped him out all the way to Krakoa and then in the final part of this issue Sarah Pakelli drew this these last five pages we got this huge reveal that they've been teasing for so long not the new X-Men team something completely different and while we didn't actually see what the reveal is, they've been teasing it for so long. They also teased it last week in Marauders 21. Um, we saw Emma Frost about to make the announcement. She like got it all heated up and teased people and everything. Um, and then said, this is the start of a new age. That was like the last line of this John and Hickman run on X-Men. And we saw an image of like some space sun or something with a couple mutants crouched on like floating rocks. So I don't know, some crazy visionary Krakoan thing. We saw ambassadors and different celebrities having huge reactions to whatever this reveal is gonna be in Marauders 21 last week. So I'm super excited to see them actually do this reveal. It's probably either gonna be happening in the planet size X-Men Men number one next week, or they're going to do it in Sword number six, which is also one of the more important Hellfire Gala issues. So these were the two official ones, which are actually, you know, on the X-Men checklist that you're supposed to get Excalibur 21 and X-Men 21. And then my comic shop, I'll just mention this, also set aside this other issue, which like very, very loosely ties into the Hellfire Gala. It's Children of the Atom issue number four. So this is another one that I have not been getting ongoing. Um, but it, I was getting the scoop on what this series is actually about, and it was kind of a good jumping on point, I'd say. I think it's about this group of humans who are like trying to be mutants, trying to get onto Krakoa, and then one of them is actually showing mutant signs, but you can see they're, by the cover there, they're inspired by like classic mutants. And then we saw that on social media, they saw the announcement for the Hellfire Gala, and then they were trying to hatch a plan to like, to, they were some, there was some kid at their school that they knew was a mutant, so they're gonna steal his sweater and like, put it on them so that the Krakoan detection would see them as mutants because they would have like some of his DNA on it. I don't know, pretty weird stuff, but they did not get into the into Krakoa. They were ambushed by like cradle agents from the whole outlawed event, I'm pretty sure. And uh, I don't think that they're actually going to get into the Hellfire Gala in any future issues either because it'll be long gone by the time they'd actually be able to get in. So yeah, it was a decent issue. Definitely don't get this if you're trying to get all the Hellfire Gala stuff though. All of, it was like one panel it was actually mentioned in and they saw that announcement on social media. So for sure, not actually necessary to the Hellfire Gala. So that wraps up week two of the Hellfire Gala, my review series on the Hellfire Gala. Let me know down in the comment section below what you thought of the video, any feedback, what you're thinking of this event so far and how you're, you're liking these Hellfire Gala issues. And now for my final score, I give you guys something out of 10, uh, which I'll be doing for this whole five weeks of the Hellfire Gala. I'm gonna say I liked Excalibur. It was a pretty decent issue and I, they caught me up to date on everything. Um, despite not having read the series, but it really didn't tie into Hellfire Gala that much. And then X-Men 21 was a banger issue. I absolutely loved it. There was some great art, despite there being four different artists. Each one of them delivered pretty well, with Sarah Pakelli and Russell Donovan being the best of all, in my opinion. And we almost got that big announcement, but it was just a really good wrap-up to Jonathan Hickman's whole run, respecting all of his stuff that he's done with Cyclops, as well as tying really well into the Hellfire Gala. Both of these together, I'd say I'd give these a 9 out of 10. The X-Men issue was just so good. Excalibur was pretty decent, but together it's not quite perfect, but 9 out of 10, that's a really good score. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to subscribe. That's the big red button, which is sitting right below the video. You can also hit the notifications bell, which is sitting right next to it. You'll be notified every single time I post a new video if you don't want to miss any. So that's everything for me for today. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Bye, guys.